Hey YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here is the third and final part on this 1959 Plymouth Fury that we're doing a full respray on. Now, the first video went through the paintwork on the roof, primer work, we spray the insides of the door jams as well. Second video was a bit of time lapse madness, just a real quick one and that got through some of the masking and then also got the first two coats of Nason 2K color over the entire car. There was actually two of us in there painting at the time, me and my business partner. And this video here is going to simply be one coat of the Nason 2K color in my Devilvis SGK 600 BV 1.4 mil spray gun. I'll be doing the driver's side, my business partner will be doing the passenger's side. Now, I must make a mention that us in Australia drive on the wrong side of the road. So, when I say driver's side, I mean the right-hand side of the car. Yes, this is obviously an American import, and I would be expecting a lot of American people would be watching and admiring the beautiful paint job that we're doing on this car. Yes, it is really, essentially, just a spray job. We did do some major dents on it. The real ones that stood out, did all the stone chips, we primed the entire car. I painted that roof in a nice baby blue type color. And what's essentially just a quick paint job really, uh, he went to a few other body shops before he came to us and it seemed like no one else wanted to touch him for any less than $10,000. The car really had bugger all rust in it. It's very rare to see a car like of this age in this condition. There wasn't even any areas that we needed to do fiberglass repairs or rust converting areas or cut any patches out at all. It really was just the sand. Few minor dents in it. Uh, a couple were bigger than others, but yeah, nothing that was really extensive damage or anything. Bit of bog in there and slap a couple of coats of paint on and make it look nice again. A lot of panel shops, they just seem to get in the mindset that everything has to be absolutely 100% perfect but it doesn't at the end of the day. A nice coat of paint over a car can do wonders without going to extremes and making flow coating it and taking all those panels off and taking all that acrylic paint back off and then, uh, you know, digging out old repairs and, yeah, you know, full restoration style thing. Every car doesn't necessarily need that. And uh, that's where we come in. You know, we'll do a quick scuff and fluff over for you. And the way I see it, we've done it for less than half the price of uh, anyone else. So even if it only lasts five years, he's still got money in the bank earning interest. He can get it done again in five years because it really is in good condition. And as far as driving down the road, he's going to be getting just as many people turning their heads with a $4,000 paint job as a $10,000 paint job. Now, gun settings. Full fan, set the pressure to 25 PSI and have the fluid wound right out. It really is a pretty awesome gun, this SGK, also known in parts of the world as the FLG5, but it is basically an identical gun. I've only ever used it in the 1.4mm setup, however it does come in a 1.8mm and I've heard it's actually quite a good gun for primer as well. It's extremely affordable, like I got this 180 Australian dollars. I've seen it on Spray Guns Direct website for I think it was around 70 or 78 pound. And I've recently teamed up with those guys. They've sent out a few guns to do a few reviews on. If you guys actually mention that you got onto them through me, so if you just make a mention to my name, send them an email after buying or something, they said that they're gonna throw in a cleaning kit. So it's, it's not, you know, it's not, thousand dollar product or anything but it's something and uh yeah i think it was quite nice of them to do that um a little cleaning kit valued at around eight pounds so it's got a little um gun lube kit and just brushes and little pipe cleaners and stuff like that so uh the gun lube could come in handy for some of the diy guys guys at home that might uh use the spray gun and then leave it on the shelf for three months or so come back to their gun and it's all uh, sticky because it's not getting used every single day. Obviously, it would be safe with a spray gun. You know, it's not like putting oil on your gun. That is one thing I would never do. Personally, as a painter who uses my guns every day, I don't really have a need for that lube, so I probably try and stay away from it. Although they do say it is safe for use with spray guns and it doesn't have oils in it, so you're not gonna create a contamination of silicon or anything like that. I would still rather stay away from it unless you store it as uh, necessary, but um, that's entirely up to you what you do. And uh, yeah, always interested to see what uh, your guys' thoughts on things like that are. Don't forget, it's not like I am some painting king that knows absolutely everything about it. 
I would say my knowledge is quite extensive, but am I wrong sometimes? Absolutely I am. I do my best not to be, but uh, we all do make mistakes, and I do enjoy sharing what knowledge I do have. I think it's a great little hobby for me. Um, what I used to do, I'd be playing StarCraft or playing some sort of a battlefield, bad company or something like that playing shoot 'em up games but to me this is my game now making youtube videos and answering questions it's uh to me i actually get a better kick out of it i've always liked giving uh you know like giving presents and shit like that and to me this feels like when i'm answering questions it feels like i'm giving so i actually really get a lot of enjoyment out of that side of the youtube thing as well if i ever don't get back to you it's not because i don't want to it's just because i simply don't have the time so i thought i'd touch on the prep work quickly that we did on this car it literally was just a quick block down like if you look at this car when it's out in the sun or outside you can see some ripples you know like it's not dead straight it's not perfect or anything but it's a good color to hide you know if it was going black we may have gone a little bit further with stuff like that but um yeah we just gave it a quick block over some of our repairs we put some uh, filler in, just some fine filler over all the spots where there was pinholes and if we'd missed any stone chips or anything like that. So the, the surface is nice and smooth at least, so we don't have big craters in there or anything like that. And then, um, yeah, we just hit the whole thing with 320 grit and then went over it with 500 grit to finish off. We also went around all the edges to make sure there's no rough bits on those sanding edges as well. Made sure they're all sanded down properly and gave the entire car an extremely good blowdown. Clean the booth out, put a light layer of water on the floor, get the broom and sweep that around so we're not left with big puddles that the airline's going to flick up onto the car. Yes, I have had that happen before. Anyone who watched that LH Tirana clear coat video will know about that, but I got away with it. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. I managed to get the tack rag because it was only in my first coat and I blew the water off and tack ragged it off. And I just got away with it. But anyway, yeah, be careful of all that contamination. Make sure the car's extremely clean. If you're ever not sure about it, so if the car looks like someone's been putting tire black on it and they love their car, they love to keep it really clean and they put tire black on it every single day, prep sole it or wax and grease remover it before you even touch that car, before you even start doing any repairs on it. Maybe even just get some degreaser and clean the entire car out before it even comes into your workshop. And then wipe the entire thing down with wax and grease remover and do that before every single stage. So before you do your filler work, before you do your prep work, before you do your masking and then after you do your masking and yeah, you, you can do your best to eliminate some of those kind of contaminations but it's not always possible to 100% do. Um, I actually had a guy say that he's drawing a connection between water on the floor and um, screwing up your paint job. Um, personally, I'm yet to say it because I am aware that you don't want water in your paintwork but I make it so that there's only a very light layer of water on the floor, right? and then leave that car for say an hour or two so it's just skimmed over so that if any dust does land on it it's not going to actually sink into it and then what I do is I just crack the door open on the booth so if it's a hot day and that water in there it's not going to sort of make a humid environment in that booth that will then make that water land on the paint it's going to go out the door and you've got a little bit of a breeze to come through so that's my way around that. Personally, it's worked for me. Some people have said that putting water on the floor has made silicon problems, even blooming issues where you get the entire car sort of look like a chalk, like you put matte clear over it. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, spray painting is uh, not easy. There's many variables that can ruin your job or make it look awesome. But um, yeah, it's up to you to be sort of a detective in a way, I guess, and figure out what happened when something does go wrong and then put measures into place so that it doesn't happen again. Now, what I've just seen here is a little spot on that fin that was a little bit dry. So I just got a bit of that AK350, which is the uh, DuPont product. Uh, it's actually been renamed to Chromax now. So Chromax AK350 is just a fade out thinner or a blending thinner. It's awesome for spot repairs and stuff like that. So you don't really want to go and uh, put more 2k color on it because if you do that then it's not going to melt in around the edge and you'll have this big dry spray patch now you can just go and mix sort of 70 percent normal 2k reducer with your color and it'll probably melt in just as good but if you've got the correct uh blend out thinner then you may as well use it um here you go this is the side that my business partner did the entire car looked really clean 
There was really, I think we did get one big bit of silicon up in this guard here. I dabbed that before it was too late, so let it flash off for a couple of hours. Just got a little touch up brush, dabbed it in, and um, that enabled us to denib that a couple of days later. It was a couple of big bits of dust in it. It really didn't get, you know, stupid amounts of polishing on it. We hate polishing, everyone hates polishing, and if we can uh, keep it to a minimum, that's definitely better. This here, I'm gonna finish off with a bit of a before and after. Oh my God, that was one thing I was definitely hanging shit on the owner for about at the start. Those uh, those little decals that he put on the boot. I said, man, what are those like uh, super cheap auto style um, wings that you put on the boot? They, they were absolutely terrible. Um, and that's the bonnet off. And it, the car did leave us with the bonnet off, unfortunately, because he was still waiting on some hinges. He um, decided to go for a drive with his bonnet half up and then the bonnet decided to flip right up, bend those hinges and damage the tops of the guards and totally screw his bonnet too. So we did paint a, uh, a new bonnet, well, secondhand new bonnet for this car for him. This is that. This is it at a the next stage in the queue before it had been uh, put back together. Had a few more of those trims put back together. We used uh, a little bit of glue in a couple of spots because some of those old clips had broken um, and there's that roof ended up getting a flow coat I made a mention to that in one of the previous videos I think I got a yeah there was a, mainly a stone chip and then I got a little bit of solvent boil and a few bits of dust in it yeah just really wasn't happy with it it looks pretty crap but yeah ended up getting a coat of nice uh, standox HS clear over the top of it so it looks a million dollars when it left I know you're all thinking it would have looked a hell of a lot better painted up like Christine in the red with the cream roof and uh, yeah now you have seen this video you should get out there and watch Christine next it's a totally awesome 1983 movie based on a Stephen King book it's uh, one of those cult classics uh, yeah about this car of 58 Plymouth so not a 59 like this one 58 Plymouth it comes to life and it kills all these people on um, on the production line and then yeah kid gets it at the age of 16 and yeah just go out and watch it anyway it's a totally cool movie and um yeah i hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video give it a big thumbs up if you have make sure you do check out my website thegunman.net.au i've been busy over there doing some in-depth blogs including a little bit more information on some of these projects so i hope you guys do appreciate the effort that i've been putting in over there as well now you've seen this video get out there and paint some shit Thanks for watching, and this has been another Gunman Production. Goodbye.